Hi everybody, my name is David. Thank you for watching Crazy Narcissist Ex-Girlfriend. This is part two of my Q&A video. I'm answering questions from the last Q&A video. Any questions you have, go down below and ask me and I'll answer them in the next Q&A video, okay? So, part two, Bob Bobson. Do borderlines have self-control to switch personalities by will? Um, switch personalities. You know, borderlines are, are, are can, can be the worst. Sorry, and I don't want to offend anyone. Uh, all borderlines out there, but borderlines can be the worst. Um, not only will they be the one that I know of, the only one that I've heard of uh, in the cluster B that can actually slip into psychosis um, during one of their rages and stuff. Um, most drug addicts are borderlines, you know, uh, but can they switch to per personalities by will? I, I don't know really how to answer that question. Um, they don't have much of a personality in the first place, I think, and they mirror people and stuff, if that's what you're talking about, but they will slip into rage, and they will even, when they know that that messes you up, they will fake it. They'll even fake rage to get what they want, get a reaction out of you. Um, I know that probably didn't help much. I'm sorry, Bob. Go ahead and ask me again. Ask me in a different way. Ask me, give me some more details, uh, what you're trying to, what you're trying to find out. Okay, thanks, Bob. And we'd love to know where you're from. Chantel from Ontario, Canada. Hello, Chantel. My ex stepped up his proxy abuse by sending his flying monkeys, but, or sending his flying monkeys out to stalk me. Why can't he move on? Is he truly nuts? Well, I mean, yeah, that's not normal, right? So, yeah, that's crazy. That's nuts. I mean, nuts is a slang term. Sure, he's fucking nuts. Yeah. Um, you know, they have attachment problems. I've, I've talked about this a lot. Borderlines seem to be the worst. Um, they will carry pictures of, of all their exes with them and show their new current one and talk about their exes and bring them up all the time. And whether it's good or bad, you know, I mean, they just, they, they'll keep little trinkets and mementos uh, of their exes. They'll, um, they'll leave stuff in all their places and all their homes, but also have something of theirs. I mean, and then they'll keep going back and back and back, and they gotta have sex with this one again, and they gotta try and have a relationship with this one again. I mean, they just fucking attachment, just cuckoo. Yeah, nuts. Yeah, uh, Alicia, my ex narcissist is now with someone that may also be a narcissist. Why is he so more excited about her than he was about me in the beginning? Alicia, this has nothing to do about you. You, I'm sure, are a much, you know, if, if she's a narcissist, then you're a healthier, nicer, better person, I'm sure. And he doesn't like that. He might want crazy right now. So, um, you know, the initial love bombing with two narcissists must be pretty intense, right? Thinking they actually found, you know, a match made in heaven, right? You, you know, and, and I know that he felt that way with you and you felt that way with him, but... Uh, you know, the thing is, is nothing ever lasts, Alicia, and this won't last either. So you're, you're questioning it on timing, okay? So he was like that with the person before you, and that person can't figure out why he was like that with you, right? In the same week, like a week after he just left her. So it's timing. Uh, Diana from San Francisco. Hello, Diana. What would you do if the narcissist you're co-parenting with has her music playing when she picks up the children, never has the car seat in the car, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, I shorten this up. I'm sorry, Diana. But basically, uh, the person that's picking up your child has the music blaring, no car seat strapped in, they ignore you, and you're like, what should I do? Because you feel like you're just basically kissing your child, you know, and sending them off to who knows what, you know, and I, I don't know how to help you with that very much. Um, I would document it, take photos of it. I would not let, I would not strap anyone in and I'd sit there and let them do it. Not let them leave until, I mean, you can do all that. And I know you know that. So I'm guessing it's just easier to do it the way you're doing it. Less stressful. Um, if it is stressful, then you're going to have to find a different way, right? Maybe you can fight it now and this person will start behaving correctly as a, as a parent should. Um, as far as the terms that you want. Um, and this should be also something you can take up with a lawyer, right? I hope there's a lawyer involved. Um, thank you, Diana. I, I'm sorry I can't help much, but I always tell everybody in these situations, document everything, okay? 
and uh, you know these are terms to be discussed uh, with your lawyers. Jay Strada from Portland, Oregon. Why is it when I talk about what I have gone through, my anxiety starts to kick in and I feel sick inside? It's been three and a half months. Well, that's why. It's so fresh, okay? And it, if you're not talking about it, that's why you have so much anxiety still. Um, your brain <laughs> is, is going back to that traumatic experience because you're talking about it, but what you really should do is really dive into it and really talk about it with somebody, somebody you trust and you can talk about all of it, somebody who can have a different perspective and maybe experience with this and can really help you. That's what you need. Um, you can't not talk about it, right? Um, and if something really makes you upset and uncomfortable, don't do it. But um, maybe it's the people you're talking about it with, maybe, you know, but you got to get this out, okay? You got to. You have to. It's the most important thing to do. Talk about it. You can't just keep it all up inside. You can't. You can't. It, 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 it doesn't help you heal and recover from this to, to keep it up inside. And I mean, after all this manipulation, you're trying to figure all this out on your own. It's very difficult, okay? It can take a very long time to heal. Um, you want the truth. You want to make sense of all of this. And sometimes you, you really need an outside perspective. Okay? And you need to just at least um, process the stuff that happened. And the emotions with it. Okay? Monique from Cape Town, South Africa. Hello, Monique. My ex-narcissist would watch a lot of violent movies or channels on TV, murder-related. Is it normal for narcissists? To do this on such an abnormal basis, well, I don't know. Um, I'm going to say not all narcissists do that. I don't know if it's normal for them to fixate on murder and violence, but I'll tell you this. Um, when you have people that have a limited range of emotions that they don't feel completely human, they know they're missing these emotions. So a lot of this stuff is excitement. You know, they go for excitement. Stuff like that. And that's why you have antisocial personality take risks, right? They do it for excitement to feel human. Hope that helps. Angel Sky from the United States of America. Why does my ex still share photos of us on Facebook when he is with someone else now? Well, that's what I was talking about. He's probably borderline, I'm guessing. Um, he has attachment problems. This isn't about you. This is about him. Um, he may want to get a rise out of you or whatever, but he's dealing with his own crap, you know? I mean, if he doesn't even know you're going to look at him, and uh, you know, you guys, we always talk about these people do stuff to mess with you. They know you're going to see it on social media and stuff. Well, they don't know for sure, right? I mean, that's just some weird, weird stuff to post p photos of your ex on your social media just to get a rise out of your ex and hope they watch it and see it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just attachment problems, okay? Uh, Sean Blight from United Kingdom. My ex used to talk about sexual things in front of my mother, even if I told her not to. Could this be a way of breaking my boundaries? Well, yeah, I mean, a way, yeah. I mean, they're always breaking boundaries, right? They're always testing, and they're always, and you tell them not to, and they do it anyways. And they like shock value. Who knows what she was really up to, probably up to something, probably trying to sicken your mother out or get, just get you upset about doing it. You know, um, and when you told her to stop, she was like, oh, okay, that's what I do. That's what obsess you. Oh, keep doing it. <laughs> right. Samuel Gergen. Hello, Samuel. First question. Can the narcissist be described as being our soulmate who we're destined to meet so that they bring all our issues to the surface to face and deal with and resolve? Sure. You, it, it can be described, the narcissist can be described, you mean the narcissist relationship, yeah, I mean, yeah, you want to, you can describe it as any way you want, um, I don't believe in soulmates, and I would hate to think that my soulmate was the abuser that, that tried to kill me and wanted me to kill myself, right, I'd hate to think that she was my soulmate, um, but I, I do agree with the rest of it. Um, and that's just my view on soulmates. So if I don't agree on soulmates, of course I don't agree with this. But you can say that and you can say whatever you want. 
um, if you believe in soulmates, and then, yeah, maybe your abuser was your soulmate. I don't know. I hope not. You know, I hope if, if you believe in soulmates, I hope you believe you have another soulmate out there or that your real soulmate isn't that person, right? Um, <clears throat> but yes, yes, these people are called like the deliverer of our problems, you know. Um, we have childhood issues, you guys, and a lot of times they don't surface. We don't know. We don't realize it. We aren't forced to deal with them, right? Um, <clears throat> a lot of us who have been forced to deal with our issues in a narcissistic relationship, you could probably get by in life not if you never did say you went to a small town in, 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 in small high school and you marry your high school sweetheart who's not toxic, who's not a narcissist, you guys stay together forever and you avoided a lot of these issues surfacing, but they're going to still surface in your marriage, right? It, these issues are going to surface when you attach with somebody because these are attachment problems. These are attachment, these are shame and then you have depression and you get anxiety from it. These issues surface big time when you love somebody and especially when it's a person that exploits these things because that's what they do. They exploit them, right? Number two, second question from Samuel. My ex-narcissist has finally removed our photos together from her social media. What does this mean? It's funny, you guys are all asking so many similar questions. Um, so she's removing him from her social media finally. What does this mean? I'm going to take a guess, right? Because I don't know everything. My guess is she wants to look more available. She's on the hunt. You know, you can't, it's going to be hard to lock in a new source of supply with all these photos of a guy on her social media and she's trying to convince him that she's single, right? Free spirit from Australia. Uh, do the narcissists ever call off their flying monkeys? Is there ever a point when they give up? That's a great question. Um, I don't see why they would. I don't see why they would ever give up. Um, eventually they'll get tired and not put so much energy into it, I suppose, after years go by and they've had multiple relationships end in disaster and they already are focused on the last person they abused and the person before them. Because you like are way down the list now, right? Um, that's probably when, my guess. Jenny from Bulgaria. Hello, Jenny. Do all narcissists jump from one relationship to another? No. And do all people that do are narcissists? No. So that's a double no, okay? Um, not all narcissists jump from one relationship to another. Um, I'm guessing there's narcissist, narcissists that aren't in relationships at all. Um, a lot of narcissists is the couch surfer narcissist. It doesn't want relationships. They just boom, 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 person to person to person. Every single day is a new person, right? Um, <clears throat> and definitely, <clears throat> definitely people that jump from one relationship to another aren't all narcissists. I know plenty of people that do this. These are people that can't be alone. There's people that just, there's codependence. There's people that just cannot be alone. Cannot, cannot. My mother was one of them. My mother could not be alone. Her entire existence was about, I need a man. I need a man. I need a man. I need a man. I'm not, I don't have a man. I'm not happy. I don't have a, I mean, it's all based on a man, that her happiness. And, and she's not alone. <laughs> I've seen this countless times with older women. Um, they, you know, they believe their clock is ticking and oh my God, and I'm aging and, you know, I already have children, a failed marriage. Oh God, I'm never going to be happy unless I find a man, you know? And it's like, man, um, try and be happy without one, you know, cause God, you know, that's going to make you jump into relationships one after another, right? Um, so no, no, I hope that helps. Care Bear, can a normal person... Uh, develop NPD or BPD due to trauma, traumatic events at an older age. Okay. So we have narcissism, borderline, stuff like that. Can they be developed at an older age? And uh, I I'm going to say no, because you said develop. They don't develop at an older age. Uh, what happens is we develop empathy and they didn't. So that's, and you can't develop that later too. 
once you, you missed your chance. Once you grow up and you don't have it, that's it. You aren't going to develop it at an older age, for one. And uh, you're not going to develop narcissism at an older age. That That is cause, that is because you didn't develop empathy. Um, but there are traumatic things that can happen. So what I've heard, what I've looked up, what I've researched is that narcissist, narcissism can, be, can happen from like brain injuries, traumatic head injuries, stuff like that. Okay, I hope that helps. God damn it, dude. Okay, and David from Pennsylvania. I share a child with my ex and I have to deal with my family. So taken by her, I have to deal with my family. So taken by her, they won't believe anything is her fault. How do I get them to stop thinking this way? So, David was in a relationship and while he was with this narcissist, his family fell in love with her, thinks she can do no wrong and now they're apart and he's telling her, she did this, she did that and they're like, no way, no way, no way. It, the, the relationship ended, but it's not her fault. It's your fault, David. It must be. It has to be. If it's not her fault, she's great. Well, David, that's wrong. That is wrong. Okay? And that is part of the reason I'm guessing that guy into this is not a very supportive family. Okay? A supportive family would not do this. And a supportive family doesn't need to pick sides and find out whose fault it is. A supportive family needs to realize that our child, David, was in a very toxic, abusive relationship and David needs help. So he doesn't do this again. It doesn't matter whose fucking fault it is. Matter of fact, that's amazing that they don't take your word. That's amazing. And if your family cared enough, they learn about this stuff. I'm sorry I get upset, but you know, it's one thing. It's one thing that people don't have compassion about us and what we've went through. But when it's their own damn families that don't care, that is wrong. And I would really, really evaluate your relationship, any of you out there, with any family that doesn't support you. And then you might realize why we got into this damn mess in the first place. Because we don't have family that supports us. Anybody who doesn't support you, drop them. Drop them. Don't no get negotiate, don't beg, don't wait. You know? Okay? All right, I hope that helps, you guys. Uh, any more questions you have, please go down below and ask me. And please, everyone, vote for this video. Tell me if you thumbs down, thumbs up, whatever you like. I don't care, just vote, okay? And uh, ask me any more questions, I'll answer them in the next video. All right, guys? Uh, check out my website. Go to my Facebook if you can. Follow me, like me, do what you can to help support me, okay? What I'm doing is trying to get this information out there to prevent a lot of this pain that you guys have gone through with other people, okay? They don't need to go through this. They just need to learn to start loving themselves, okay? They don't need to lose, you know, their job, their homes, their children, their lives. They don't need to fucking kill themselves, okay? 22 soldiers commit suicide every day from PTSD. This is serious shit, okay? This information needs to get out there. And I'm trying to do everything I can to get it out there. So any support you guys can give me is great. And what you can do is just, the, you know, just a comment is activity on this video. Uh, and, and YouTube will recommend it more. Voting. Voting. Give me a thumbs down. I don't care. Recommend it. Share it with somebody. You know, put it in a playlist. Put my, if you guys could, put my videos in one of your playlists. That's huge. Huge. That helps. Okay? These little things help. Okay, guys? Thank you very much. Make sure you always love yourself first. Okay? See you next Monday. Bye-bye. Danny Dog Productions.